Hi everyone. In this lesson, we're going to construct confidence intervals for a mean mu when the population standard deviation sigma is unknown. Now recall that if sigma is known, we use this formula right here for our confidence interval. Now, when the population standard deviation sigma is unknown, what we use in place of the z alpha over 2 values is what's known as the t alpha over 2 values, where these are obtained from what is known as the student t distribution, or just the t distribution, instead of the standard normal distribution, which is what we use to evaluate the z alpha over 2s. So we replace the z's with these t's and we'll go over how to find them in a second. Also since the standard deviation here is unknown, we replace the sigma with your sample standard deviation. That's all we have to do. So you evaluate your sample mean x bar, evaluate the sample standard deviation, call it s, and use that in place of the sigma right here. The n will not change. And so what we end up with is this formula for confidence intervals for a mean mu when the population standard deviation sigma is unknown. So we have x bar, our sample mean, plus and minus t alpha over 2 times the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So it looks very much like this formula up here but we replace the z's with t's and the sigma with an s. And that's it. That's all we have to do. Now to evaluate the t alpha over 2's, you can use Excel. And right here is the Excel command that you would use to find the value t alpha over 2. So it's negative t dot inv for inverse, parenthesis alpha over 2, where alpha is your significance level, comma n minus 1. Now n minus 1 is called your degrees of freedom. That's what we call n minus 1 when we're using a student t distribution and we'll discuss that more later. Now take note of one other thing related to the values t alpha over 2. They depend on the sample size n. So since they will change depending on your sample size, we really don't have common values that we'll state for these like we did for the z alpha over 2s. The z alpha over 2s were independent of your sample size, so we could state values for them for a 90%, 95%, 99% confidence interval, but we can't really do that for the t's because they will change depending on the sample size n. I mean, we could do that, but our chart would be really large in that case. It's just easiest to evaluate these for each n depending on the problem using an Excel command like this down here. So just keep that in mind. We're going to evaluate the t alpha over 2s each time because they will change depending on our sample size n. Now let's take note of some characteristics that the t-distribution has. We're not really going to use these in our problems, but it's interesting to take note how the student t-distribution compares to the standard normal distribution. So the student t-distribution is the distribution of these values right here. So you notice we take our sample mean x-bar, subtract the population mean from it, and divide by the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Now the student t-distribution is, like the z-distribution, a continuous distribution. It is also bell-shaped and symmetric about the mean. However, there is not one t-distribution. There are rather a family of t-distributions 
dependent on the value n, where n is your sample size. All t distributions have a sample mean of 0, but their standard deviation will differ depending on the sample size n. The t distribution is more spread out and flatter, it has more variation than the standard normal distribution. However, as the sample size n increases, the t distribution approaches the standard normal distribution. And the value n minus 1 is called the degrees of freedom for a student t distribution. Now let's take a look at this graphic comparing the student t distribution to the standard normal distribution. And we'll see what we mean by this picture right here and the fact that as n increases the t distribution approaches the standard normal distribution. Now here in this graphic you see uh, this black curve right here that is your standard normal distribution n01 and the red curve right here that is a t distribution for a value currently we have n equaling 2. So the degrees of freedom would be 1, n minus 1. Now let's see what happens as we increase the sample size n. Watch what happens to the red student t distribution. Also take note that the student t distribution is more spread out than the standard normal distribution is. Now watch what happens as we increase the n. You see how the student t distribution is creeping up towards the standard normal distribution and once n gets above 30 and gets close to 50 uh, it's almost indistinguishable between the standard normal distribution. So that's how the student t distribution compares to the standard normal distribution. It is symmetric and bell-shaped, more spread out, has more variation than the standard normal distribution, but as n increases your sample size, it approaches the standard normal distribution. Now let's take a look at this example where we calculate a confidence interval for a population mean mu when the population standard deviation sigma is unknown. So in this example the manager of the Inlet Square Mall would like to estimate the mean amount spent by shoppers per visit. So a sample of 20 customers was taken and we have down here the amount spent by those 20 customers. Now what we would like to do is calculate a 95% confidence interval for the mean amount spent by customers at the mall per visit. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the mean and sample standard deviation for our data. Now the easiest way to do that is to use a calculator or Excel. Let's put this data into Excel and I'll show you a little trick to do that. So if you just highlight the data like this and either hit control C on your keyboard or right click and copy, then we can go into an Excel spreadsheet like this. Now here we have opened an Excel spreadsheet. So if you want to paste your data into it, just select a cell somewhere like right here and then just do control V on your keyboard or right click and paste. Now our data didn't go perfectly into Excel you see because each number didn't go into an individual cell but we can fix that here. If you highlight on that first row right here the cell A1 and then go up to data and then over to text to columns click on that and then you can just click on next or finish and there it put our data into individual cells. 
Excel picked up the fact that there's a space in between the numbers and separated them and then put them in their own individual cells. That's basically what's going on. Do the same thing with the next row. Data, text to columns, finish. And the same thing here and here. And there you go. Uh, sometimes your data doesn't paste perfectly into Excel and you have to manipulate it a little bit like that. If your data had commas in it, when you click on text to columns, there's an option there to specify that you have commas in between your data. Then Excel would pick that up and put each number into an individual cell. Or if you had dollar signs in there, Excel could pick that up too and separate the numbers into their own cells using this text to columns feature. All right. Well, now what we have here is we have to evaluate this formula right here to obtain our confidence interval. So we need to evaluate the mean of our data that we have right here and the sample standard deviation. And then we also have to calculate the T alpha over 2 term. So over here, let's evaluate the mean and sample standard deviation. So let's put them over here somewhere. So we'll just find a cell, type in mean and standard deviation. And then we'll also calculate the T value right away. So the mean, uh, Excel has that built-in average function. So we'll use the average. There it is. Finish typing it or just hit tab. Now highlight all of the data. Hit enter. And there's our average, 57.952. Same thing for the standard deviation, except we use the function stdev.s. Now we want to use the .s for sample standard deviation, so that's the one we want right there. Highlight your data. Close off that parenthesis. And hit enter. There is your sample standard deviation. If you wanted to see a few more decimal places you could widen this column a bit like that. There you see more decimal places that way. Now to evaluate the T alpha over 2 you have to remember that we wanted a 95 percent confidence interval so that means that our significance level which is alpha is going to be 0.05. That comes from 1 minus 0.95, where the 0.95 comes from the fact that we want a 95% confidence level. Now, let's evaluate that T. So right here, what we're going to type is equals negative T dot INV for inverse. Close off the parenthesis. Now we want a probability in here. So we're going to put alpha divided by 2. Half of alpha goes in here, recall. So 0 0.05 divided by 2, comma. And now we want to put in the degrees of freedom. Well, we have 20 data values up here. So the degrees of freedom are going to be 20 minus 1, or 19. That's what your degrees of freedom are, recall. It's always the number of elements in your sample minus one. There we go. And there you go. 2.093. That is the T alpha over two in this case. Now just note two things here about this. We had to put the negative in here because if we didn't put that in we would get negative 2.09 back. So you could compensate for that if you wanted. It's easiest just to put the negative in front of the T dot inverse that will automatically then make it positive which is what we want. There you go. Also notice that that 2.093 is larger than 1.96 which is what we would use if we were constructing a Z interval where we knew the population standard deviation.
And that's always going to be the case. Z alpha over 2 is always less than your T alpha over 2. So keep that in mind. And so what that means also is that your T intervals tend to be larger than your Z intervals. So now we have to calculate our confidence interval. Let's put it down here. Now we have to execute this formula right up here. So we need X bar first. So for our left hand endpoint, we're going to go equals. Now let's see, the mean is in cell B6, 57.952. That's the X bar. So B6 minus, then we need the T alpha over 2, which is in cell B8 times the sample standard deviation S is in cell B7 and divided by the square root of 20. That's our N. And there's the left hand endpoint for our confidence interval. The right hand endpoint is exactly the same except we use a plus instead of a minus just like we have right over here. So we just type in equals the mean B6 plus uh, T alpha over 2 that is in cell B8 times S which is in cell B7 divided by the square root of 20 and there you go there is our right hand endpoint for our confidence interval so that's it there is our confidence interval and and by convention we would round this to three decimal places because our data is given to us with two decimals, so we would round the left hand endpoint to 40.428 and our right hand endpoint to 75.476. And there you go. There is our confidence interval. Let's take a look back at the answer in our notes. Now here's the answer that's in your notes. Notice we have our mean. That's what we found using Excel right there, 57.952. Our sample standard deviation, n is 20. Our t alpha over 2, we used this command to evaluate it. That 0 0.025 came from 0 0.05 over 2, where this is our significance level, alpha. 19 is n minus 1, 20 minus 1, and you get that right there for your t alpha over 2 value. The e is our margin of error, that's this term. When you evaluate that you get 17.524. That's the number that you add and subtract to the sample mean to get the n points of your interval. Notice down here we take x bar, the sample mean plus and minus the error E. So this is the E right here and right here. That's your margin of error. And then if you just plug all of the information into the formula for your confidence interval, you get this and that's exactly what we found using Excel. And so there you go. That's how you can use Excel to easily evaluate these confidence intervals.